Now let's move on to discuss the brain hemispheres. The brain is divided into two main hemispheres, a left and a right. The hemispheres of the brain are separated by the longitudinal fissure. The cerebrum is divided into two nearly symmetrical hemispheres. The two hemispheres are connected through a band of fibers known as the corpus callosum. Each hemisphere is subdivided into four lobes plus the association areas. The cerebrum is involved in processing both sensory and motor information. Sensory information leads to conscious awareness and then cerebral neurons direct voluntary and involuntary control over somatic neuronal function. The brain surface markings and divisions. As shown in this lateral view, the central sulcus separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. The lateral sulcus separates the parietal lobe from the temporal lobe. The cerebral hemispheres are covered with superficial gray matter. The surface of the brain has large ridges or gyri. In between the gyri are depressions known as sulci. The groove between the primary sensory and the primary motor areas of the cortex is the central sulcus. Just anterior to the central sulcus is a precentral gyrus or primary motor cortex, and just posterior to the central sulcus is the sensory area of the cortex. The lateral sulcus is the inferior border of the central sulcus, and the lateral sulcus divides the frontal and parietal lobe from the temporal lobe below. The motor and sensory areas of the cerebral cortex. The frontal lobe is located at the front of each cerebral hemisphere, and within the frontal lobe are the following primary regions, the premotor cortex and the motor cortex. The premotor cortex processes sensory information and controls the proximal and torsal muscles of the body. The motor cortex functions along with the premotor cortex to control muscles of the arms, hands, and face. Within the parietal lobe is the following primary region, the somatosensory cortex. This brain region receives sensory inputs from the skin, muscles, and other parts of the body. This region has been reported to contain the sensory homunculus. This is a sensory map or somatotopic map of the body. The temporal lobe contains the auditory cortex, which is responsible for processing sound information and spoken language. The auditory cortex works with inputs from the cochlea of the ear and the neck muscles to turn the head towards the sound. The visual cortex and the sensory cortex. The sensory cortex is a term used to describe all the sensory areas in the brain. These areas include the somatosensory cortex, the visual cortex, the auditory cortex, the olfactory cortex, which are located in the temporal lobe, and the gustatory cortex, or taste, in the parietal lobe. Collectively, these brain regions represent the endpoints of the somatic nervous system. This incoming information is integrated with motor signals and leads to a voluntary control. The occipital lobes are the smallest lobes of the brain and they're located at the back of the skull. The occipital lobe contains most of the visual processing brain regions, including the primary visual cortex and the extra striate cortex. Visual processing involves two streams, a dorsal stream and a ventral stream. The dorsal stream is towards the parietal lobe and it's associated with object location and motion. The ventral stream towards the temporal lobe is associated with object recognition. Within the gray matter of the cerebral cortex is what's called the central white matter. These are bundles of myelinated axons which include the following groups of fibers. Number one, the association fibers. These interconnect tracks between the different areas within a single hemisphere. Number two, the commissural fibers. These connect the two cerebral hemispheres. The prominent commissural bundles make up the corpus callosum where information crosses over from one hemisphere 
to the other. And number three, the projection fibers. These link the cerebrum with other regions of the brain and the spinal cord. Deep within the brain are the basal nuclei. The basal nuclei or ganglia are nuclei located near the center of the brain made up of a group of interconnected structures including the cerebral cortex, the thalamus, and the brainstem. The functions of the basal nuclei are as follows. A. The caudate nucleus and the putamen. These control the cycle of arm and leg movements once the walking movement has been initiated. B. The claustrum. This is involved in the processing of visual information by focusing attention on specific patterns. Let's continue with the basal nuclei. The amygdaloid body functions with the limbic system, and the globus pallidus controls the muscle tone in the appendicular musculature. The basal nuclei function to correctly position the body in preparation for a voluntary movement. In general, the basal nuclei set the pattern for body movements once they're already in motion. In this image, you can see the location of the caudate nucleus, the putamen, the globus pallidus, the claustrum, and the insula. Also located deep within the brain is the limbic system. The limbic system involves a number of structures and functions to produce emotion, behavior, and memory. The structures involved in the limbic system include the amygdaloid body, which functions to integrate the limbic system, the cerebrum, and the various sensory systems. Number two, the limbic lobe. This is made up of the cingulate gyrus, dentate gyrus, and the parahippocampal gyrus. Number three is the fornix. This is a white matter tract that connects the hippocampus and the hypothalamus. And number four, the mammillary bodies. These contain motor nuclei that are involved in the control of reflex movements associated with eating and swallowing. Near the limbic system is the diencephalon. The diencephalon is made up of three components, the epithalamus, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. These connect the cerebral hemispheres to the brainstem. The epithalamus is a region that includes the intraventricular foramina, lateral ventricles, and the pineal gland. The pineal gland produces melatonin, which is involved in the regulation of the day-night cycle. Let's discuss the thalamus in more detail. As you can see in this lateral view, the thalamus is located in the midline superior diencephalon. The thalamus is a relay station for signaling. It makes up the majority of the neural tissue of the diencephalon. It's made up of a number of nuclei. The anterior nuclei, which play a role in emotion, memory, and learning. And this is part of the limbic system. The medial nuclei. These connect the basal nuclei with the prefrontal cortex and functions as part of conscious awareness of emotional states. The ventral nuclei. These are made up of the ventral anterior, ventral lateral, and the ventral posterior nuclei. These function to relay information to and from the basal nuclei and the cerebral cortex. This includes sensory information such as touch, pressure, pain, and temperature from the spinal cord. The posterior and lateral nuclei. Posterior nuclei. This includes the pulvinar. This functions to integrate sensory information for projection to the cerebral cortex. Also, the geniculate nuclei. This receives visual information from the eyes. The lateral nuclei of the thalamus. These function as part of emotional states and the integration of sensory information. These impact the feedback loops in the cingulate gyrus and the parietal lobe of the brain. Towards the anterior of the diencephalon is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is located at the floor of the third ventricle and extends from the optic chiasm and the mammillary bodies. It's connected to the pituitary gland through the infundibulum. The hypothalamus is made up of a number of nuclei. 
Number one, the supraoptic nucleus. This functions by secreting antidiuretic hormone. Number two, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This regulates the circadian rhythm. Number three, the paraventricular nucleus. This secretes the hormone oxytocin. Number four, the preoptic area. This regulates body temperature. Number five, the tuberal area. This produces inhibiting and releasing hormones that target the anterior pituitary gland. And number six, the autonomic centers. These control heart rate and blood pressure through the regulation of autonomic centers in the medulla oblongata. Caudal to the diencephalon is the mesencephalon. The mesencephalon includes the superior and inferior colliculus as well as the cerebral peduncle. The mesencephalon is also known as the midbrain, and it's involved in processing visual and auditory information. There's a superior and inferior colliculus on either side. The superior colliculus receives visual input from the lateral geniculate of the thalamus. The inferior colliculus receives auditory data. The walls and floor of this region contain the red nucleus, which sends involuntary motor commands to the muscles for limb position and muscle tone. Also, the substantia nigra is in this region. It plays an important function in regulating the motor output of the basal nuclei, and it's involved in Parkinson's disease. The next part of the brain stem we'll discuss is the pons. The pons is located between the mesencephalon and the medulla oblongata. The pons is made up of a number of nuclei in its gray and white matter. In the gray matter, there's the respiratory center. This modifies the output of the respiratory centers in the medulla oblongata and other nuclei that are associated with the cranial nerves and the cerebellum. The nuclei in the white matter are the ascending and descending tracts, which interconnect other portions of the central nervous system, and the transverse fibers that interconnect the cerebellar hemispheres. Adjacent to the brainstem is the cerebellum. This is made up of left and right hemispheres and has an anterior and posterior lobe. The lobes are separated by a primary fissure. There's a small ridge or band that separates the cerebellar hemispheres. The superior, middle, and inferior cerebellar peduncles are tracts that link the cerebellum with the brainstem. The functions of the cerebellum include, number one, adjusting the postural muscles of the body to maintain balance and equilibrium and number two, programming and fine-tuning voluntary and involuntary movements by storing movement patterns in memory and regulating activity along motor pathways involving the cerebral cortex. The lower portion of the brainstem is the mandela oblongata, and this is continuous with the spinal cord. The mandela oblongata has in its gray matter the nucleus gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus. These relay somatic sensory information to the thalamus. Also, the reflex center, the cardiac center, the vasomotor center, and the respiratory center. The white matter of the medulla oblongata includes ascending and descending tracts that connect the superior brain with the spinal cord. 